Okay, hi everyone. I'm just going to do a quick uh, Game of Thrones review, um, just to get it out there straight away. Uh, like a lot of people, um, very disappointed. I uh, felt they dropped the ball, um, and after eight years plus of investment in the series, it's uh, very disappointing. Um, I'm going to try and keep this short, so I'll dive straight in. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I felt great when I saw the, the build up for the Dothraki charge um, even though you know cavalry at night time on terrain they don't know versus an enemy that they can't see why would you send your cavalry in it's basically giving them every disadvantage possible um, tactically absolute disaster and you know, prove to be a complete disaster. On, uh, on top of that, you're going against an enemy that can raise the dead. Why would you send in, you know, however many thousand, you know, free troops, <laughs> basically, for the Night King? Uh, just, you know, uh, but that was early in the episode, so I was like, oh, you know, I, I'll, I'll stick with it. I'll, uh, I'll keep watching. You know, surely that they must have a reason for it turned out they didn't so <laughs> that kind of set things off for me uh, but you know of course kept going uh, you know you don't give up on on eight years or eight seasons worth of of a great series up until now um, for the most part anyway um, you know uh, Melisandre coming back um, you know, I was really happy to see her but it didn't really make a great deal of sense um, as to why she was coming back at that particular time. Um, but again, you know, I, I could let that go. Um, you know, it wasn't a huge problem. Um, I was just disappointed that, you know, the only thing really that she did after that was a pep talk, which um, was lazy exposition, I felt. Um, I mean, literally, as soon as she had that talk, I was like, oh, it's going to be Arya. Why, why'd you do that? You know, if you're going to set up, you know, an epic ending like that, which I've got to say was badly done, um, why telegraph it? You know, I'd just you know, lazy writing, lazy writing, and disappointing. Um, and you know, I just want to say, I, I, I love the fact that it was Arya. Um, like a lot of people online have said. Uh, why the huge build up with the faceless men the ability to change her face why wasn't that used I, d I don't I just don't get it it didn't it didn't do anything for me um, it didn't progress the story anywhere it didn't didn't make any sense just again very disappointing La lazy writing we are all that stands between you the do not and violation. Together, we yeah, can I think George Martin is probably. You know, well, you know, I, don't, I don't want to put words into his mouth. I, I, I would imagine he's disappointed, I'll just put it that way. Um, let's see what next. Um, you know, the, the dragons were a great visual feast um, in. I, I kind of enjoyed the battle. I like the way the um, the Night King used the the weather, which has obviously been set up in past episodes. Um, I felt that that was that was well done, and obviously the dragons were devastating when they're in combat. Um, that the the trench being lit on fire um, I d that didn't work for me at all. I mean, I just spent the whole time sitting there thinking, well. I mean, they, they've they've seen them walk through fire before. Uh, certainly, the the White Walker generals, or at least we've seen them on screen do that before. I'm not 100 percent sure how many of the the characters will have done that. So I felt, you know, building a you know a trench and lighting it on fire. I mean, at best, it will only give them a limited amount of time because fire doesn't burn forever. Um, but the fact that they were relying on either Danny or John's dragons to light the trenches, mm, that seemed poor. Um, I mean, A, you couldn't guarantee 
the Dragons would be able to do that when you needed them to. And if they could, why would you light a trench when you could just have them <laughs> kill the entire army of whites with dragon fire? So, yeah, that was disappointing. I mean, the plan to put people in the crypts, I mean, as soon as I heard that, I was like, okay, crypts versus a guy who can raise the dead. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's obviously going to happen. Um, and, it, and it did, to be fair, but why didn't anyone die? I mean, they'd, te they'd literally telegraphed the fact that they were putting no one with any combat experience in the crypts. O of which, I've got to say, why would you do that? Why would you not put at least a couple of, like, you know, well-trained guards, even if they were, you know, to use Star Trek parlance, you know, red shirts to take a death? Why, why would you not do that? Why would you just put all the women and children down there with absolutely no chance of defence? Um, you know, they, they built up Syrian, uh, Tyrion and Sansa to, you know, maybe have like a, you know, a, a suicidal way out type deal or possibly have a, you know, a fight against the White Walkers to prove their leadership credentials. Uh, and they did none of it. You know, there there was some nice touching scenes, you know, harking back to the fact that they were married and, you know, he wasn't a complete ass to her and that was nice. Um, but, oh, and, you know, that of course leads into the plot armour. Oh, man. I mean, how many scenes did you want to put in of people almost dying and then not dying? <laughs> I mean, that that's, that's everything that I felt George R. R. Martin was against and everything Game of Thrones was supposed to be against and, and they did it um, you know, I mean for want of better words they, they, they Hollywooded out uh, in the one show that was supposed to not be Hollywood um, and on top of that they they did, they did it after spending two full episodes of building up to this epic battle. Oh. Oh. Just. Uh, you know. It. it what. This, this isn't the series for fan service. I'm sorry. But it isn't. What made it great. And what gave it the fans. Was the fact that they weren't doing that. Oh, and then they did it. Um, and in the, the, the final season as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know like a lot of people I, I ju I'm just not invested at all in it now you know it just it felt weak storytelling uh, extremely poor writing um, I mean I, I'm not saying that the direction was perfect in, in this episode um, but How personally I, I, I felt the director did a good job yeah. with a, a bad script and a bad story um, I would say whoever made the decision to film this at night oh why just I mean the only thing I can assume is that they thought about doing it during the day um, but this the costs to CGI you know 20,000 Dothraki on horseback um, would be too much um, and you know maybe you know having white giants and various other things uh, on the undead side it would have just cost them too much money uh, and they decided that no we'll do it at night so you know I don't have a huge problem with that but you know I, I mean I'll put it this way I had to close the curtains turn the light off um, <laughs> you know and and turn you know all of the gamma etc up on the monitor to get a you know a proper look at it and that's that's you know kind of disappointing in it you know uh, an epic show that has been you know at the top or near the top for you know quality of CGI and quality of filmmaking um, for quite some time now uh, so that, that that did take some away from it for me which I, I'm not going to lie was disappointing um, but I have to say overall I, you know director wise um, you know certainly my initial responses coming out of the episode where it, it was terrible story writing um, but director 
salvaged it really for me with the visuals and the spectacles and the way the suspense was drawn out in some scenes um, of course it was poorly done um, in a lot of ways uh, you know, particularly with the the over dramatic um, are they gonna die are they gonna die and then of course it turns out that basically um, no one dies you know no disrespect to uh, the, the two ma reasonably main characters who did die but you know how I, I just don't understand how, how none of the major you know like legitimate Game of Thrones characters uh, certainly from the leadership point of view how they could not die it, I mean th this is when you wanted to do it <laughs> this is what you've been building up for for so long uh, and, and they just it seems the decision making based upon the interviews that I've seen since with David and Dan they're essentially saying well we didn't want to kill people because the fans liked them uh, and uh, to which How I, I, I I'm just I incredulous. Um, so, wow, yeah, just very, 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 very disappointed overall with it. Um, you know, I, I'd give it... Initially, I gave it 10 out of 10 for the director and 2 out of 10 for the story. Um, having reflected upon it over a few days, I'll, I'll drop it down to maybe 8 out of 10 for the direction which I'm sure a lot of people will say, no, 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 that's way too high. Um, I, I take your point. Um, I don't have a, a, an issue with that. that. You know, this is just personal opinions. Um, and I just wanted to get a, a reaction video out there to join the gazillion other ones out there. Um, yeah, very disappointed. Um, I, I hope they can redeem themselves over the next three episodes um, I'm not really particularly invested in who ends up sitting on the Game of Thrones I mean at this point maybe they'll all have a group hug decide that it's best not to be bad people anymore and they'll form a co like a cooperative government or something <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me right now um, anyway peace out everyone just wanted to get that off my chest uh, enjoy your day bye